some faith. I have a plan to get the most out of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I'll be taking this as an opportunity to show you my favorite way to play. Since the game is now out on Xbox One, PS4, and PC, I wanted to make this. Basically, this video is what I do in Ghost Recon Breakpoint for the best tactical sandbox experience. I call it True Ghost. It's all about taking the best parts of Breakpoint, embracing them, and bringing you closer to a harsher survival experience. I would expect nothing less. Thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video and giving me a copy of the game. So, what do I do for realism? Turn the HUD off, turn guidance mode off, and set difficulty to extreme. Huh, <laughs> that seems pretty basic, doesn't it? Well, it kind of is, so you should definitely apply it, try it, and give it a shot because it's really cool. And have your friends try it too because it's awesome in co-op. Makes a huge difference. But also, it's actually more complicated than that because those settings affect this game differently than others by Breakpoint's very design. Changing those settings changes how you interact with the game. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can play Breakpoint. You got every playstyle you could think of from Rambo 1 all the way to Rambo 4. Good. Personally, I prefer stealthy tactics and punishing ramifications from my mistakes. Which, in my opinion, is where this game starts to shine. Where survival is more punishing and where managing the risks you need to take is more risky. In order to manage risk, we must first understand risk. <laughs> How do you spot risk? How do you avoid risk? And what makes it so risky? So, let's show you how to play to this game's strengths, starting with the UI and guided mode. It's pretty neat how this works, and it makes just as big an impact as difficulty does, if not more. This is slowly changing, but in many games, the space between point A and point B is generally neglected, with the map being a literal vehicle instead of a vehicle for plot or immersion. That's a little different in Breakpoint. The way they designed this world and the mission structure is kind of unique. Turning off the UI changes your dynamic with the game and the map and the mission structure because all of these facets have been designed with that in mind. Follow the trail behind the ancient ruins. Your destination is in the mountains between two waterfalls. Understood. Go lead out. Aroa seems to have been developed around the concept that the geography itself is all you need for navigation. You've got easily identifiable mountainous horizons, unique layouts of biomes. You should always be able to position yourself using those, especially if you have binoculars and drones. All of this makes you small and the land large. And I love that because you are a small force. You're just one man in this huge archipelago, just one tiny little ghost. You know, chaos theory and all of that. Between the wolves hunting for you, the unforgiving terrain and heavily defended bases, it's easy, very easy to become overwhelmed without the UI holding your hand, especially in firefights. You just get all twisted around. It's great, I like being disoriented. As for missions, many of them present you with questions that require you to investigate clues and use the power of deduction to get answers. The less UI you have, the more useful it can be to read and understand the clues, and I find that fun. Investigating can be comprised of piecing together pertinent intel that you can find in key locations, or questioning civilians and interrogating hostiles. Don't hurt me, all right? I've told you all the information I have. <laughs> Reading the intel can give you the clues to know what to do next. Once you weave a web of information great enough, you move on to the next step. Sometimes this process is largely immersive, but other times it's more functional where, as you read and explore, you're following a trail of logic that ultimately will lead you to a specific goal. Because of all of this, the map is now a useful tool, not just a thing you 
<laughs> mark waypoints with. The regions and the compass are your navigation along with the geography. Now, if you play with the HUD and guided mode on, missions are more classical and straightforward. And you sort of go where it tells you to when you check off the boxes. Anyway, I think it's neat how they've managed to make a system where it works either way, simultaneously, with the flip of a switch. Ubisoft games have crazy customizable interfaces. This is no exception. You don't have to go full no HUD if you don't want to. You can leave friendly markers on, objective guidance, or crosshairs. I think it's fun to use a laser sight when aiming over the shoulder personally. These are my usual settings, but there's no right or wrong, except for enemy markers. That's always wrong. <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's some crazy piece of tech out there that can allow you to track targets even when they're behind walls without a physical device. I mean, they have literal drone swarms, and this is where I draw the line of disbelief. The concept of the injury system is awesome. It elevates the world and it makes it a dangerous place to traverse if you're careless. Not only can you injure yourself, but clumsy falls can get you spotted, which is far worse with how I play. You've got a couple different types of injuries that affect you in different ways. This adds layers to gameplay and complications to situations. Different injuries can affect your stamina, your aim, how quickly you're able to walk, what guns you're able to use, how quickly you're able to reload. I like the injury system so much that I like injuries to be more common, so I play on extreme difficulty. Not only are you more prone to injury, but this difficulty has the slowest health regen, which I like for realism. This pushes me to make more use of my pre-mission planning in the bivouac, thinking ahead for what rations would be useful or what prep would come in handy along with remembering to keep my water canteen filled and to be more conservative with my medical supplies. The developers have said they're going to have a lot of post-launch content and something I would love would be like a super realism mode where you have to eat, you have to drink to survive, and there's no health regen, injuries are more punishing. That would not be for everybody. In fact, that might be super, super niche, but I think that would be fun. There's a lot you can do to mitigate injuries when traversing. You can manage stamina with rations and your water canteen. This aids in your stability. And how you walk is important too. I've found for ascending and descending, zigzagging is the safest. Oh, serpentine Babu! Babu! Serpentine! And you're far less likely to lose your footing if you're crouched. Again, this isn't just important for injuries, but if you lose control of your movement, your chance of being spotted skyrockets. I don't often play on the highest difficulty in games because it usually means more laborious instead of more challenging. But I like to view extreme difficulty as simply leveling the playing field because I don't feel any more durable than my enemies do. After all, my strength in combat comes from my training as a ghost. On extreme, it feels like they can kill me with as many bullets as I can kill them. I'm pretty sure snipers have killed me with one bullet before. And I can kill any enemy with one bullet as well, so it's cool. Enemies are more perceptive as well. They could detect my sounds and visuals more realistically. Sometimes, depending on their angle, I think, they wouldn't notice me if I popped out for a second. But more often than not, if I slipped out of cover, or even if my head was exposed over a hill and they were facing me, I was spotted and my entire plan worthless and wasted. Because now I just had to adapt to the new situation that unfurled. Their perceptiveness never really felt cheap, but <laughs> it was sure frustrating finding out just how sloppy I can be when maneuvering through a base, which are awesome. Perhaps the strongest feature of Breakpoint are the design and layouts of compounds. I mean, uh, this is the meat of the game. I spent 90% of my time in Wildlands infiltrating bases with different kits and approaches, so I'm happy that it's substantially better here. 
bases are all unique from one another and they feel carefully planned for maximum or minimum tactical opportunities depending on the purpose of the base. These can be total minefields to navigate. Here's a list of things you should worry about. Flying security drones, all-terrain death machines, mortar drones, turret drones, heavies, spotlights, high ground. Actually, it's the last one that gave me the most trouble. And I'm not just talking about watchtowers. They could be in a building and spot you through a window. Uh, whatever that was, I'm gonna go after it. And just like your weapon and caliber makes a difference in damage, so does theirs. So those snipers are very dangerous. And if you're playing the game without enemy marking like I am, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough! Really tough. I like to watch from a distance. I like to use my drone for a couple of minutes, try and figure out their patrol pattern. Watching footage of people playing this game and playing it yourself on extreme with no HUD are two very different things. You've got to be really careful when dropping soldiers. You don't know whose field of view they might be in. And it felt pretty realistic what they noticed in their field of view. They'll even notice your drone if you accidentally bang it against something. They'll hear that. And don't get me started on dead bodies. Luckily, we have multiple ways of hiding them, but picking them up can take a few seconds. Seconds I can't spare. Not to mention, you walk a heck of a lot slower with that sort of a load. So I like to take enemies hostage. It's faster and more sadistic if they walk themselves to their hiding spot and then I knock them out. All of this makes features like prone camo more useful because sometimes you do mess up anticipating patrols and this is an excellent way to hide from them. Another new feature to Breakpoint is adaptive cover and learning to use it intuitively has been finicky for me. Namely, trying to face in the direction I want to or sticking to certain surfaces, but aiming around corners is absolutely invaluable as is snapping to cover instead of approximating cover by crouching, so it is a great feature but I would like it to be improved in a patch. It's not something you need extreme difficulty or the no HUD thing to make use of, but adaptive cover is another thing you really start to appreciate and use once you're playing True Ghost. Another thing I like to do in my play is prioritize blueprints. Some people may prioritize loot, and that's fine too. The developers have left different ways open to play the game, and loot is always useful because of the systems they've designed. But I enjoy all the exploration and infiltration required to nab these weapon blueprints. And once you have a blueprint, you can now get that specific gun leveled to you anytime you want for a negligible amount of credits. Pretty damn useful. And finally, skills. I'm having fun exploring gameplay through a basic set of what I feel to be everyman skills and perks, and right now I'm just discovering my gameplay through the limitations I set for myself. Also fun is arranging presets based on specific scenarios, but again, through limitations, like maybe running pistols only, or only using one primary. I really like depriving myself of things. It's fun. <laughs> Very monastic. Just as I like to explore maximizing everything I can, I also like to explore pushing what I can do under the circumstances, so to speak. Some of the skills in the game you may view as more realistic or less realistic, depending on what your role is supposed to be, but there's a lot of flexibility, which is very nice. Again, whether you're Rambo 1 or Rambo 4, there's fun to be had. If you have any specific ways that you like to play Ghost Recon Breakpoint, or if you have a way to make things even more punishing or more realistic than I have, please leave a comment so I can read it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave a like or subscribe for more videos like this. In fact, I should have some videos on the screen right now about Breakpoint that you might like to see.
Thanks again to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to learn more about Ghost Recon Breakpoint, I've got a link down in the description below. And until next time, stay frosty.